Mm, yes, Amika. Kamala. <laughs> from being human. One of the most common questions I get and Aurania gets is what happens when you've cleared your karma? And tonight I'm going to take you into your soul because I'm going to show you what happens when you do a clearing. Here's our blessed Yelena. Um, please, write a comment in the, in the doings or if you've got a question, any time, during this live or afterwards, more than welcome. Here's us as a human being. This is the outside layer. Take you through your Atlanta so you know where we're going. Here's the outside layer of your spirit. Here's your emotional body. Here's your mental body. This one organizes everything and does all the thinking. If you want to have fun, you've got to be in this one. These people are serious. These ones look into the future. These ones live in the past. Now we're heading into this one here. Us human beings, we are astounding. We blink and normalize everything. Now what happens is our subconscious mind controls our emotion, our physical reality. This is our third dimensional reality and this is our fourth dimensional reality. And our blessed subconscious ego is the puppet master of the fourth dimension, which is the puppet master of our spirit. Now this, this works off subconscious mind programs. No one knows it. They just think they have a life, most people think they have a life in hell, and it's a, anything but a bowl of cherries. Now, we can, these subconscious mind programs, they are based on fear. Because our sub, one of our jobs of our subconscious mind is to protect us. And what it does, it protects us by using fear. Because when we have fear inside of us, it creates separation. So as a child, where are we? we a little child here. Here's a little child. And he goes to touch the heater. We need a heater. He goes to touch the heater or touch the fire. When he goes up there and he touches it, the pain goes through the layers and notifies this one, holy hell, I have touched a heater. Now, the subconscious mind goes, I better protect you from that because you're going to be living in this lifetime for at least 75 to 80, maybe 100 years, I'm going to put a mind program inside of you to protect you. So when you, as a human being, as a child, or as an adult, because these subconscious mind programs last our entire life, we do not know that when we're a child. This young lad here, he's already burnt himself once. He has experienced being burnt by the heater or by the fire as a child. So what happens is that when he gets close to the heater or the fire, the subconscious has put a fear-based mind program in him to say, hey, keep separate from this. This is going to hurt you. And it's a very handy thing to have because... If we never had that, we would be an adult and we'd go, let's touch the heater, touch the heater, and we get burnt again. So our subconscious mind patterns are built on fear to protect us from anything that hurt us or scared us as a child or before, as before a child. And what I mean by that, if anything upsetting or disruptive happen during our birth, the subconscious mind will put a mind program in there to stop it from happening ever again. If anything happens during gestation, something scared mum, 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 because what, it, what happens is whatever hap scares mum or hurts mum, hurts bubs. 
and the subconscious mind goes, I'll protect you from that. So this thing here is happening and working for us even before we pop out in our birth. Now, so, these subconscious mind programs, they work on fear. And you know, all the things you see on the computer, Facebook and all that, fear is this and fear is that. Well, I'm telling you, in many cases, we need that fear. If you are standing at the side of a busy street, without those subconscious mind programs, we would walk straight out and get run over. We would have no fear. The lad. He would burn himself on the heater or the fire every time a coconut because he would have no fear. So the propaganda said that says that fear is our enemy. Well, in actual case, our our fear is very handy. Uh, I could get up here and walk outside to uh, outside the door. Now my mind goes, keep be careful of the chair in case you kick that blinking leg on that chair and hurt your toe that's a fear-based mind program so i walk around the chair instead of kicking it fear depending on your perception is a good thing anyway whatever the subconscious ego puts a mind fear-based mind program into us as a child stays with us as an adult male or an adult female that's the hassle. So, you know, as, a, as an adult, I know that I have to be careful around the toaster because if I pick it up while it's hot, I'm going to get burnt. Now, when we go to play one of these subconscious mind programs, we get so used to them. We, we normalise them because we've been living under these limitations for this lifetime and past lives. And what these do is that they will limit you to some part of your clock. Let's say it's three o'clock. You know, say, hey, you're limited till three o'clock, and this person will go, that's all right. It's treating me okay. I'm having not a bad life. And it's okay. You know, we have bad days, have good days. Sometimes it's happy, sometimes it's ugly, sometimes I'm sad. That's at 3 o'clock. Now, if a person's programmed to stay at 3 o'clock, that's their, that's their destiny for this entire incarnation, incarnation. Now, people ask Arania and I, what happens when you do a clearing? Well, what happens is, first of all, you have to own your clearing. Just because you have a sore toe and you say to your eternal flame, excuse me, can you please clear the pain of my sore toes? It's driving me friggin' crazy. It does not work like that. Tell me how it works. Right. Here's just here's the subconscious. There's your subconscious content. There's the tip of the iceberg. You we want to clear the tip of the iceberg. So let's say that's the sore toe. So we say to the sub soul, which is the super consciousness, soul, please, can you clear my sore toe, which is in the third dimension, which is the tip of the iceberg that's sticking out of the water? And this goes, oh, I'm unable to do that because you have to get what is creating the sore toe, what is holding up the sore toe. And what patterning is inside your subconscious mind to clear. So what happens is that you have to find out what's creating the sore toe. What is stuck in the subconscious mind. And when you do that, this, this is when you get your wisdom on what creates life. Because as you go along clearing your stuff, you start realising, oh, far out. That's underneath my sore toe. Or that's underneath why I, I'm unable... <laughs> to get any further with my income. That's why my, my relationship keeps on falling over because I've got stuff in here. The relationship, 
the income, the sorto, the bung knee, whatever you got, is all here. And to clear it, you have to go into here in the subconscious mind patterns to get rid of it. When you get rid of it in here, this disappears. The next minute your sorto goes, hmm, that feels a lot better. Or your relationship sorts itself self out. Or you get a rise and you go, I've never I've never actually got a rise like that before without asking for it or so forth. That's what happens. Now, we just think this is normal, having a stink life. See, we actually live in hell. <laughs> a lot of people, we are conditioned to think we have to die to go to hell. Well, have you had a look around recently and all the stuff that's going on? Have you ever thought you may be in hell already? Now, I'm going to take you inside your soul. Because I'm going to show you what happens when you do a clearing. Because that's probably our most common uh, question to newbies. So let's say we find a... Here we go. We find our sore toe patterning. The big toe. We've got a, the big toe. It's connected to the throat, all right? And the big toe muscle is the... Other than the uh, diaphragm, uh, the big toe muscle is the most used muscle on the, in the human body because it's always keeping us balanced. So let's say we, we find this balance pattern and we go far out. Here it is here. Now, and this one's keeping me stuck at three o'clock. We go, oh, right, well, we better clear it. So we do the magic all lifetime and we take this out. This is in the fourth dimension. We live in the third dimension. The operating system that allows us to live in the third dimension is fourth dimensional. So all our patterns are in the fourth dimension. So what we do is, I better show you the soul. Here's the soul here. This is the fifth dimension. Soul or Holy Spirit. This is just spirit. If anyone just talks about spirit, if they're accurate, accurate enough, this is the only part they're talking about. If they start talking about the Holy Spirit or the soul, they have jump from here to here. Now, life in the fifth dimension is way more powerful and a whole lot more love in here. Everyone wants to have a love life. Well, most of so if you want to have a love life, you have to love it projected from here. Because as I said before, this our fourth dimensional patterning is all based on fear. And yes, you can try and ignore the fear. Yes, you can try and be nice and happy and love and light and all those fantastic things here. But the point is, you still have the patterning because this, our fourth dimensional <coughs> reality, Helps us live in the third. Well, it actually creates a whole lot in the third. So, no, we found this sore toe patterning. To get rid of it, we have to put it inside our soul because no thing in the fourth dimension can live in the fifth. It's too powerful and there's too much light in there. Hence the word Holy Spirit. So, <clears throat> so what we do, we take this patterning out we put it inside our eternal flame, gone, it, it's gone in the twinkling in a, of an eye. Now, we go, hmm, must never leave a void here because this bright so-and-so is going to fill it up with something or something else is going to go, wow, there's a free parking space there, I might jump in there. So what you do is you copy Thank you, and we paste that in there. Thank you, thank you. So what happens is that when your subconscious mind goes to play the old pattern, which is cause and effect, see, if you want a car, the soul can manifest you a car. But the subconscious mind works on a process. And it goes, oh, you'd like your car. Let's say you want a car as an outcome. Well, you want the effect of a car. So the subconscious mind goes, well, I'm unable to actually manifest that for you, Charlie. But I'll tell you what I can do. I'll go into your mind programs and find out what kind of car you are programmed to have 
and you have to cause all these things. So the, this car has to be beat up, has to be second hand, it has to be must be dinged up, never taken seriously. Uh, it's used more as a workhorse than a passenger, nice looking car. And what will actually happen is that your subconscious mind will go into all these, this list of causes down here, so you can have a car. You might, I had a client once who, for her to have anything new in her life, they had up here something has to die or she has to lose something. So every time this dear being wanted something in the effect, she had to lose something up here. And it often manifested as death in her family. That was one of the first things we cleared. So she could manifest from here without the necessity for our subconscious mind to create a death or a loss over here. Now, I'm going to take you inside your soul because when... This being here goes, oh, I'd really like this to happen. Something to do with the big toe. So this goes, we, we need to go to that big toe patterning over there. So it goes over to this shelf and it goes, oh, here it is. And instead of picking this one up, which is cause and effect, and the one that's giving you a sore toe, it picks up this and it will play that pattern. And that is really important. Because this pattern here, instead of being stuck at three o'clock and having a sore big toe, this, pat this one here lives in the center of all our patterning. See, this is built on number 12. On 12. So while we have our subconscious mind programs, we can be one of these, but you'll be stuck to it. So what happens is that you'll be three o'clock. Or you'll be stuck to 7, seven o'clock. You won't be able to shift because you're programmed to be here. Or you're programmed to be at 11 o'clock. When you put that in there, it shifts it from being stuck on the outside to being in the center. And when you are in the center, you can go to all these different numbers. That's why the, sub, the superconscious is known as the central mind, because it's in the center of everything. The subconscious mind is 12. The, the superconscious mind, Holy Spirit and Soul, is number 13. The 13th point is in the center of the clock. So whenever we do a clearing, we go to the centre of the clock. Spectacular. That has no limitations. Instead of being stuck on one of the things on the outside, you can take your free choice because you have subconscious free choice. While you have the old patterning in there, I've got to get one of the right sides. While we have this old patterning in there, we have no subconscious free choice. So therefore, when we want a car, yet you can have the conscious free choice of going, far out, I need a car. The sub will go, well, I've got the program to tell you how you get your car, what kind of shape it's in, and everything else that's going on. So do you understand? Free choice, subconscious choice, and the subconscious choice is limited to whatever you have in your patterning. Now, thank you, thank you, Mr. Clock. What happens? When Now, when you put the eternal flame in that mind pattern, for a start, it never goes. It's called the eternal flame for a reason. You will always have it. It will never wear out. Even if, you, if someone does a clearing now and 40 years down the track, they pass off the planet, they still keep this clearing. So when they go to live in the fourth dimensional reality... They still have this light in their subconscious mind. So that's a really handy one to know. So what happens is that while they have that light in there, they will go through a debrief of their lifetime. They'll have an emotional response, depending on how the lifetime went. Then they'll have a debrief, and then they'll, they'll go and have a rest, and then the superconscious, which is the soul, will go, hey, you've got another vacancy here? You can come and have another lifetime. 
yours to have that then in there ready for your next lifetime. That's like having money in the bank. That's like having a lot of money in the bank because that, when you go into your super conscious, I'll tell you why it's super. For a start, there's no limitations. <laughs> and inside your super conscious, you have what I know and what we know is your universal mind. This is the outside layer of your soul, just like your flame. When everyone t talks to the universe, which is, you know how big the universe is? Well, you have one of those inside yourself, inside your soul. And it's infinite. So when you play this patterning, you are going to play everything inside this program, this eternal program. That's why it's called an eternal clearing. Because you use the eternal flame and everything inside of it. So, first of all, the first layer you have is you can have an infinite, infinite your own infinite universe. Now, you're going to go, now this is in the fourth, uh, fifth dimension, okay? So, then you're going to go in there, and you're going to find your personal star. And it's called the Merkaba. It's a star tetrahedron. It's got eight points. So when you go into 13, which is the soul, you go deeper into the soul and you're going to come across a number, eight. Because the star tetrahedron is two tetrahedron triangles, third dimension, with four points each and four and four is eight. Now, that's split up into two. Keep remembering that when you go to play this program, this is what's going to happen. Half your Merkaba is planetary. So that means you're going to, you're going to run planetary patterning, uh, what, it's, what it's to be like connected to Mother Earth, how the power you have the Mother Earth. You, next time you have a, a storm, you go outside and feel the power of the storm. That's what you'll have in your um, in your planetary mind now the other half of your Merkaba is cobalt blue and it's your cosmic mind so if you go into your soul into your universe universal league universal mind and you're going to have planetary consciousness which is massive it's the power of mother earth how many of you wanted to be in touch with your Mother Earth in your planet? That's the one that does it for you. And it's inside your spirit, uh, Holy Spirit. How many of you go out and have a look at the stars wishing you'd go home? Or you could go home? Or you wanted to be, go up there in the cosmos and have a look? That one allows you to do that. And that's in your eternal flame you have both of these inside your holy spirit now if you go inside that you are going to find something called the almighty i am presence now this is the heart of your soul this is another word for this is your jewel of existence this beams forth immense, there's no mortal words for this, immense amounts of light. The light that it actually beams is crossed light. This is the almighty I am presence. This is omnipotent, omnipresent and omniscient. Omni meaning unlimited. In every direction conceived possible. And this is at the middle of your eternal flame so when you clear your patterning and you stuck to something like a sore toe in at three o'clock and you take that out and you put in the innocent little eternal flame well when you play that you are going to play 
the eternal flame. It's called the threefold flame of Christ. Three, because it's got the planetary consciousness and the cosmic consciousness. So when you're going to play that, you're going to play your own universe, your own star, and your own source of light, which is your almighty eye. This is infinite. I have no idea what dimensions the I am is. It's massive. Because when we clear our stuff, it puts us on a springboard to bounce from here into this layer of consciousness. That's what happens when you start clearing your stuff using the eternal clearing process. That's why it is unlimited. Because you start playing this kind of stuff, this is all you get. That's what's in the centre of your clock. Right there. Light. Oodles of it. And that's what happens when you actually do a clearing. It changes your reality. Now, we have a lot of subconscious mind programs. We have thousands of them. However, with the clearing process, we have worked out a, a way of getting a lot of the programs in one foul swoop. So instead of just clearing one or two patternings, we can get a lot of them in one clearing session. That's helpful. That's the eternal flame, and that is why it works so well. We have the almighty I am in there. We have the, your planetary and cosmic minds in there. Your Merkaba, which makes up the Merkaba. You have your universal egg, bless its heart, and the eternal flame. And that stays there until you find something else that is starting to be a bit of a pain. So, say, so let's say you find another pattern, you go, oh, far out, here's something that's really upsetting. This one here. So you find out what's creating it, and we help people to find out all this kind of stuff. What you do is you take this out, pop it in, pop it in your flame, psh, gone burger. And then what you do, you go copy, paste. And you put a flame in there. And then you find this one, copy, psh, clear it, copy, paste. And you're always filling your eternal your subconscious mind up with your subconscious, your super conscious mind. And what that means, we live in the third dimensional, in a third dimensional reality. This is the solid stuff. We have a fourth dimensional operating system. So, you know how your work phone or computer works, you're going to the settings. This is your settings, they're in the fourth dimension. You're unable to see them because they are uh, they are not visible in the third dimension. That's why have people have trouble seeing ghosts. Anyway, this is the operating system, and it uses fourth dimensional software. We've had it for lifetimes. That's why we repeat our blessed subconscious lifetimes because these things stay with us. So what happens, you start clearing your stuff, putting your eternal flame in there, which puts you in your universal egg and your Merkaba and your I am presence. And it starts changing your software from fourth dimensional software to fifth dimensional software. And that's when everything changes. Still living on the third dimension, still having a spirit, in the subconscious ego, but instead of the subconscious playing your limited mind programs, bless its cotton socks, I must get sick of them because it's been doing the same things for thousands of years. It gets a chance to start creating your life and my life by using the light, which everyone wants. It's the blinking eternal flame. That's why clearings are so good. You put the subconscious, superconscious flame in there. My goodness. 
a new work of super conscious software and you're going to think your life is going to be normal <laughs> this thing's the bigger picture this thing's much bigger than the subconscious mind this thing creates everything and it can use your universal egg your cosmic and planetary mind and your I am to sort things out Superconscious software, fifth dimensional software. Okay, so that's just a heads up when you start clearing your stuff. That's the that's the free choice. If a person wants to clear it, it's got nothing to do with your belief system, nothing to do with your ethnicity. This is just how we work as a human being. It's like a car. You have a look at a car. It's got a blinking engine in it. Well, this is our operating system. This is our engine. And you can tickle it up and pop in some pretty cool stuff. If you want to hot up your, hot up your operating system, start putting some fifth dimensional stuff in there and see how you go. And what will happen is you will also normalize this until you find another pattern. You go far out. This is brassing me off. And you'll clear that and you'll pop in an eternal flame, like I said before. And you pop that in there, that's great. Then you'll find, an, and what will happen is that you will elevate. And for a start, you'll go, wow, that is pretty cool. I've never thought about that. You know, this is happening. And you'll normalize it. Because this always brings you up to the level where you are now in your subconscious mind. So you're always going up this stairway to heaven. And as soon as you stop clearing your stuff, you're going to stay there. Which is cool, because if you like it there, and you've normalized it there, you have conscious free choice to stay there. Until something rattles your cage or shakes your boat, then you go far out, I better clear that. And then you clear it, put the flame in there, and you're always going up the stairway to heaven. And it will always be normal to you. Until you meet a relative or a friend from way back, and I say, you know, you look like you used to look, but there's something different about you. What's different about you? What have you been doing? You seem to have more energy. You seem to have more sparkle in your eyes or something. I don't know what it is. And the chances are you'll probably forget because once you do a clearing, you forget that you do the clearing because you're getting on with your life. And other people will notice it because you or I or we would have normalized it and so that's what's inside your soul high dimensional software unlimited and that is your beginning to a destiny in your golden way all over the place you will have no limitation on earth or in the cosmos because you will be the earth and you will be the cosmos because in there is your cosmic and your planetary mind. And when you are there and when we are there, we are at one because this blessed little being, I'm good enough, this little being here is at one. That's why they're joined together and they rotate. That's how you get there. Anyway, it's a fantastic life. Have I lost anything to add, Dylan? No? Okay, well, see how that goes. That's just a bit of a heads up. That's our most uh, common question. What happens when I do a clearing? And what can I expect? That's what you can expect. You can expect your fifth dimensional reality to start growing. Huh. Okay. Well, have a lovely evening, everyone. And again, if you, anyone has any questions about the soul or what's in the soul or how this works, please just drop us a line and Irene and I are more than happy to uh, answer your questions. Okay, Dougie. Thanks very much. Bye. <laughs>